What's going on guys? Today we are making speed mods to our 200cc 5-speed shifter cart. Because we want to go fast. Before we get into the video today, we have two really big pieces of news for you. First, we are going to be at the Go Power Sports tent at the Pate Swap Meet. We're having a meet and greet. 2 p.m. Uh, Saturday, April 27th, 2018. So all you guys in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, come hang out with us. We're going to be there all weekend, but 2 p.m. on that Saturday is when we're going to have our official meet. We're going to be there with Redbeard's Garage, Cart Fab, Go-Kart Alley, a couple other of those guys. We're going to be piecing together a junkyard mini bike. The other big piece of news is that we finally have an air date for the project we did with that 900cc uh, Ducati cart. As most of you know, we made an episode for the Velocity Channel. We put a 900cc Ducati engine on a racing go-kart and we were challenged to do 100 miles an hour for $1,000 or less. We finally have an air date, April 20th, 9.30 p.m. on the Velocity Channel. So set your DVR, set your reminders, make sure you watch it. It's an awesome video. Basically, it's an entire build cut down into 22 and a half minutes. I was extremely happy with how it turned out. And plus, you need to see if we uh, achieved our 100 mile an hour for a $1,000 goal. Anyway, those are our two announcements. Go to our Facebook page at Cars and Cameras Reviews to let us know if you are attending the swap meet, meet and greet or not. I have an event posted uh, front and center on our Facebook page. Anyway, enjoy the video. We are doing a few things today. We're doing a tire balance, we're doing new motor mounts, we're doing a carb jet, we're doing an alignment, a sprocket, uh, and we're gonna talk about aerodynamics. Probably not gonna do anything about that though. Cause I don't think we need to. Uh, we do have a fairing right up there on the pickup truck that fit that go-kart. Well, we could possibly put it on this one, but it's going to take us putting on some brackets that we don't have. And, I mean, I got to admit, it's kind of ugly. Yep, it's, it's uh, rough. Did you notice that they, they trimmed one side for a tire? And they didn't make it pretty. Yeah. Like, it is... It's a hack job. Hacked up. And we're going to be adding another... That's like 10 pounds. Yep, at least. So, 10 pounds extra. And we're only man, looking for another just, 7 miles an hour. Yeah, we're not looking for much. Because it's already insanely fast. We could get seriously hurt on this thing. Okay. Oh, yeah. We're going to start our high-speed modifications off with new motor mounts. Our top plate is steel, but the bottom two that kind of squeeze the frame and keep the engine from moving are aluminum. We just picked up some pretty thick steel and we're gonna replace the aluminum bits with steel so we can tighten the crap out of it. So when we dump the clutch. I was gonna add to it. Oh really? So I have the aluminum addition. and steel. All right, so we're just adding two more steel motor mounts. How are we looking there? Ten bucks, half inch, way thicker than we need, but I didn't want to worry about it bending. Uh, but they're gonna go this way underneath. Yep. So that's the aluminum and this is the steel. A little bit beefier and uh, look at the crack right there. We could over drill these holes and put Allen bolts countersunk into that metal. While we have the engine off the plate, uh, Ike's gonna go ahead and adjust the carburetor needle. Yeah, more fuel. So there's no need to uh, drill the jet. So what I'm gonna do is move this E-clip down to the lowest slot and that'll give us more fuel because it seemed like when we were running it in fifth gear at high rpm it wasn't hitting as high as rpm as it could and that could have been some wind resistance uh but it also could have been us putting a it being lean exhaust and 
filter on yeah it. we put a high flow filter on it and we have a high flow exhaust from gopowersports.com uh but we didn't adjust the fuel so this will hopefully make it a little richer make a little more power than it was making at high rpm that's it cool. good to go easy peasy the drill bit is walking Totally checking us out. Oh yeah, he's out there, man. He's looking for you. I think you're safe this time. So we're waiting for the paint to dry on the motor mount, so we're moving on to alignment. It's, it's regular. Oh, okay. The other one is backwards. All right, so we're only looking at three teeth difference here. Uh, will that get us seven miles an hour? I don't know. I'm hoping between this and like a little bit higher RPM, we'll get there. Sounds good. We might have to settle for like 77 or 78. We'll see what's up. Come on. There we go. Good enough. It's very nice what you did there. With oh, you the, like that? Uh, oh yeah, with the with the the stepped. I'm gonna call it. Yeah, I didn't. Where are my bolts at? They're not here. They're right here. Look at that. Nice. I'm gonna use a cut off wheel to cut these. Good. It's there. Good. Uh, yeah, I'd turn that fuel pump off. We're getting all kinds of leakage. Yeah. Dead spots gone? I think so. That's good. You know how it had that dead spot when you gave it the gas? Mm -hmm. It seems like it's gone. Good. The two main things we're looking at in this alignment are toe and camber. Toe is the amount that the wheels are either pointing towards each other, neutral, or away from each other. So in a bird's eye perspective, here's toe out, neutral and in. Tell out is good for something like autocross, low speed racing. It makes the car darty and turn in better. Neutral toe and toe in uh, is typically what you see on regular street cars. Most regular alignments are like a tiny hair of, of toe in. And some people even like to autocross or race on neutral or a little bit of toe in. And there's a link in the description to the source I'm citing as well, if you guys wanna check that out. There's a lot that goes into alignment and this is just barely scratching the surface. Anyway, it looks like the toe is, is the toe aligned? Uh, well, no. No. Okay. No, I eyeballed it. And, okay. And I'm not. I was a. Uh... You want to use boards? Yeah, yeah. I was going to plan. I was planning on using some boards. Okay. Um. Just playing with the. 
camber a little bit and I got this one way off. Oh, okay. Well, I'll do some camber now. How much camber do we want? Uh, a little bit. Like, really? Yeah, really a little bit. Just a little bit. I'm thinking 100 miles per hour, do we want camber or do we want... I mean like half a degree. Or less than half a I degree. I mean, I'm dealing with a bubble here. <laughs> okay. You're telling me this isn't like an alignment shot? No, um, it's more like a chop shot. Yeah, now you got that right. Um, I mean... That's definitely got some negative camber. Yep. I mean yeah, like... I think that one's got positive Yeah, it camber, does have positive camber. Which I just camber. did it. That's yeah. my fault. So I just explained toe to you. Now let's talk about camber. Let's say you're sitting behind a car. You're right behind a car in traffic. This is what the tires are gonna look like. So it's no longer bird's eye. It's like if you're sitting either behind or in front of a car looking back or in front of it. You know the stance boys who have their wheels like crazy leaned in? That's a lot of camber. That's a lot of negative camber. Uh, most street cars have zero camber or a tiny bit of negative camber. Positive camber has very limited practical use, uh, maybe in some trophy trucks, I don't know. Uh, some of you experts out there will have to chime in on camber out, but as far as I know, it does not have much of a use. Anyway, we are going for pretty much zero camber. I just gave it a little camber like you asked. Okay, how much is a little though? I said pretty much zero. I'm dealing with a bubble here, man. All right, sorry dog. I'm talking like the smallest amount of negative camber. Your camber numbers are gonna have a lot to do with whatever type of driving or racing you're doing. Again, in autocross, a lot of negative camber is your friend because, well, it has a lot to do with weight transfer. Every four-wheeled vehicle when you turn in is gonna wanna keep going straight. That's just physics. So let's say I'm turning left. All the weight is gonna go to the right side of the car, if that makes sense, because it wants to keep going straight. It's gonna lean out. So it helps to have negative camber because usually if your wheel is pointed in like that, when you turn, it's gonna hit zero, in theory anyway. And it all changes depending on if you have front wheel drive, rear wheel drive, all wheel drive, what type of racing you're doing, what kind of tires you have, how stiff your suspension is, how low your car is, what your compound tires are. It's really, really complicated. That is, like I said with toe, just scratching the surface. That's why I leave it up to the alignment guy. Not yeah, me. that's why you send it in and you tell them the specs you, you get want. get it professionally <laughs> done, it could be your life. Yeah, for real. Or others. Yeah. Don't trust this guy. Yeah, as he gets his tubes. <laughs> <laughs> so show us how to do a backyard alignment, dude. Of course, backyard don't try this at home, but I'm gonna know. need some uh, boards. Some boards? I mean, if you're doing an alignment with boards and pipes, you probably shouldn't be doing alignments. Yeah. But I can't think of any alignment guy around town that's going to be like, oh yeah, bring your uh, car yeah, in. Yeah, I'll line up your go-kart. At 3 o'clock and uh, I'll get it knocked out. Yeah, exactly. The reason I grab pipes and boards is because if you're doing a uh, DIY alignment at home, they really help you tell uh, or eyeball and see what you're working with. Um, like, I'm sure when you set it up, it looked like you had zero toe. But the pipes help you tell if things are pointed in or out. I guess what we could do is we could take a tape measure, measure from there and there and then there and there, and if yeah. they equal each other, we're gonna have zero toe. Right. So we just looked at caster, which is a third alignment dimension. I'm not even gonna get into caster because I frankly don't really understand it. Uh, and I probably butchered camber and toe enough as it is. Anyway, adjusting the caster put the camber out of whack, so we had to readjust the camber. Uh, and now we're looking at toe again. All right, do you know what we want? For toe? For toe. Uh, maybe just like a 16th inch toe in. We are a half inch in. This one's a quarter inch in. So half inch in, quarter inch in. So I'm gonna go out a hair. That is zero. So it's zero. I'm double checking. Every adjustment you make can throw other stuff out. Yep. 
How are you looking? I think that's it. Awesome. Can we just tighten these guys up? Without turning anything. Yes. It still lifts that tire. Yep, yeah, well that's gonna be in the frame. Yep. That's gonna be this welded up spot right there. All we can do is try it. It'll be high. So we finished almost everything we wanted to get done today. We did alignment, we adjusted the fuel in the carburetor, new sprocket. We gotta do the chain. We'll save that for next time. Um, and tire balance. We think that's gonna be fine though. Anyway, uh, I hope my toe camber alignment explanation made sense. Hope it wasn't awful. Uh, thanks for watching this video, guys. Check us out on Facebook and Instagram at Cars and Cameras Reviews. Check me out at Isaac, it'll be fine. And subscribe to the channel if you are not already. And press the little bell next to the subscribe button for notifications. We got to thank our sponsor, GoPowerSports.com. Of course, check them out for all your racing go-kart needs. And I linked in the description the article I used uh, to help me explain uh, alignment if you want to read more about it. Anyway, help support the channel by buying some of our stickers or shirts at cars-cameras.com. Thanks for watching. Uh, next Monday, planning on taking this thing out again, hoping to hit that 80 mark. Anyway, see you all Wednesday.